Another tough Melbourne training session. The pace, frenetic. This is a team bursting with young talent. And then we have Rosie Jenke and Chris Harris, who can also get a start in Masters Games. How's the Masters Games? Fantastic. I heard you were a real star. I was. Well, but, oh no, Rosie didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> she was up the other end. She would know. Two things are evident at a Melbourne practice. Plenty of snakes and a scarcity of the captain. Where was Simone McInnes? The exhausting routine continued. Inga, what do you find the hardest thing about training? Um, constant on the go and... Huffing a bit there. Yeah. <laughs> How's the fitness going? Yeah, I'm alright. All right. Pretty good? Pretty fit? Yeah. Yeah. Hey? Good playing and good chip back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good pre-season? Yeah. Bit, bit of pre-season training? Yeah, I do a bit of running and shopping in the gym. Alright, so a bit better and stronger this year, you reckon? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Uh, lots of delight and stuff. And, oh. Okay, thanks, Ian. <laughs> thanks, mate. Here's a club where the manager still has to lace their shoes and the coach is still waiting for something interesting to happen, or for the captain to show. But they look the part. Might I say that the team does just look magnificent in their clothing this evening. I really do, David. Thank the nice day will be our body suit, our track suits, and all the rest of the gear. Oh, and about the body suits. <laughs> you want us wearing nothing? Uh, that was one of my comments today at a meeting. Yeah. If we don't have them finish in time, they will. What are you doing? The ferocity and intensity of the session left one wondering how they got through it. A 10 kilo bag of snakes may hold the key. Well, to be fair, they did work up a sweat, and of course they wouldn't be good players if they weren't good trainers. Now, time to kit you out with some goodies if your netball knowledge is up to it. First of all, our winner from last week's competition, congratulations to Susan Lyons from Mount Lawley in Perth, who knew that New Zealand finished third at last year's Worlds. A lot of other people knew too, but Susan's was the first name drawn out. Here's the prize pack, won by Susan, and on offer again this week. The sign ball, shirt, drink bottle, a Kia Anorak, the now famous ABC cap, and the Mobile League bag. This week's question, which club won the 1993 Mobile League? Was it Garvel? Ring 0055 604. Contacts? Call 0055 605 Or Sydney Electricity? Ring 0055 605 Good luck. The lines close at midday on Wednesday. Meantime, you better put the phone on the answer machine for this next match. It should be a beauty, Garvel and Melbourne. Both teams were first up winners last week. Garvel, it must be said, were pushed by the Institute of Sport. And Anne, I think this match should give us a guide to their semi-final uh, aspirations. Well, definitely both are semi-final contenders. You're right about Garvel last week took three quarters of a game to really come out ahead against the Institute and the Institute far less experienced than Garvel. Normally they're so strong in their forward line but I thought they were found wanting in the timing department. Melbourne by comparison I thought despite the injuries to their side uh, were near flawless and very strong across the line on McInnes and Tavener. So I think it's going to be a tremendous game that's assured. I, I fancy Melbourne at this stage I think they've come out where they left off last season and looking very good. Looking solid and indeed almost unbeatable up front for Melbourne is Eloise Southby and starting with her, Danny Arnott. No change to the midcourt with Michelle Benison, Ingrid Dick and Captain Simone McInnes. Janine Lynch still out with her scaphoid injury but what a luxury for Norma Plummer having Rosie Jenke to join Liz Tavener in the last line. Southby will be 20 in July and already she's serving notice to the national squad shooters that she's arrived. Her effort last week against Queensland a healthy 94% to start the season. Higher duties can't be far off. For Garvel, no surprises with that seven, but we'll look for a swap between Borlase and Avellino if they struggle with the Melbourne defence. The midcourt should be the scene of a great battle with Abbott Grant and Pierce likely to at least hold their own while Gill and Squire are also sure to have their hands full. Another big test for Debbie Miller, who has come across from Oakdale to coach. Also from Oakdale is their import, Peter Squire, the defender brought in to replace Michelle Dendecker. Peter has played at Australian under-21 level and for the South Australian Open side at last year's Nationals. And the centre pass is from Danny Grant as Garvel in the grey against Melbourne in the blue. Get things underway. Borlase first shot. Pretty crisp move to the circle first off for Garvel, but she's got to take her own rebound as she misses twice with a fairly tentative start. Contact against Jenke. And third time in for Borlase, the captain of the Garvel team. 
Paula is the perfectionist, not looking happy with that start. She's renowned for her accuracy and, of course, leading Garvel now with Michelle Dendecker off court. Shaky start, too, from Melbourne, so the pressure's showing. It's early days in the competition, but both would dearly love uh, to assert themselves and take points. Well, we only have to remember last year how close these sides were matched, with uh, Melbourne winning both times in the rounds 55-54 and in their semi, 55-53. And perhaps the players they're missing, Anne, uh, on both sides, pretty much a leveller. I think so. Both missing key defenders for Melbourne. Janine Lynch is sidelined with a scaphoid uh, injury. She's had that pinned. Also, Susie Howie out as an option for their mid-court. They've got a strong one as it is. And Garville missing their former captain and goal defender, sometimes keeper, Michelle Dendecker. And uh, we keep asking, are there any aunties in the Garville pack? And they say, any day now, any second now. <laughs> And they asked us, would we let them know if we found on air, out on air first? Oh, well, <laughs> as the players hit the court, um, Michelle was uh, overdue. Uh, but uh, we wish her well when uh, the big moment comes. Funny, because the timing's always been impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> Taverner, a little infringement at the centre pass. McInnes leaves it for Ingrid Dick. South, oh, South, the, uh, well, I didn't seem to read it through the air. She was pretty much unmarked. So, some mistakes. Another one from Garvel then. Perhaps the importance of this match, uh, emphasised by this early error rate. Well, Melbourne, I've been rapping because of their composure. Very young heads out there. As we have a look at the umpires, Jan Cross and Sharon Burge. Ball has crossed the circle, meant for Grant. Offside was uh, Ingrid Dick. That's Jan Cross on camera, working the far sideline and the left and half of the court. Beautiful pass. Danny Grant reading Avellino's slick move across the base. Timing much better there for Garvel. Yeah, I was wrapping Melbourne for their composure and uh, Eloise Southby, despite her youth, one of the most composed, just doesn't seem to miss a beat. And she's always started the games really well. So as you say, just a bit shaky knowing that uh, they're evenly matched. She's in the swing of it now. 187 centimetres, the tallest in that circle. But it's not height that she relies upon only. She has all the skills. Unlike so many of the teams we've uh, covered so far in, in the Mobile League, these two don't have standouts in the height department. It's fairly level pegging down the court and uh, quite well-rounded athletes exploring the speed and elevation uh, more so than uh, just the height. Southby, needing a slightly longer left arm. Not having <laughs> a happy start. Grant Avellino, always on the stretch. Avellino, well out of the circle. In fact, back near the, the transverse line, Signy, she wanted to open the circle again, but the feeders are looking only to the circle and to Borlaes. So that's the Garvel bench of uh, Leah Torsen, Michelle Kelso, Kelly Venice. Harnett. Melbourne by three. Make it four. Ten straight, Southby. Grant sent a pass. Avellino. Abbott stops. <laughs> Taverner over Ranner. Should have made it simple, but there was uh, a whistle. Unfortunately, that's uh, a penalty against Taverner, leaving the circle exposed. Jenky with two to cope with. And one of them dangerous. <laughs> They're both dangerous, but Avelino on. McInnes. McInnes really controls the middle here for Melbourne. Uh, she mixes up the timing, backs up the play. Southby is deceptive on the offload to Arnott, giving her her second. 100%, two from two. Grant, back to Squire, into the arms of Benison. They'll take it, Southby. Long way from home. Good pressure from Arnott. Really worked hard, her defence on that centre. Abbott. Squire, Grant. Close checking from Jenky. Close. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm a shooter. I don't want to sound like I'm against the defenders. <laughs> Sharing a bit there. Tavern a touch from Grant and... A touch? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hip and shoulder. 
Benison. Arnott. Oh, quick hands from Arnott. The double play, maybe a triple play. I've lost count there between Benison and Arnott. Gee, there were two on one there with South Beat. Arnott should have taken the shot the first time. If she looks at the tape, perhaps. Anyway, right result. You'd have been bold indeed to pick this kind of lead for either team. It's Melbourne enjoying it. Ball lays, does not pull one back. Tavener reels it in. What a pair, Tavener and Jenke. Avelino trying hard to get amongst it. It's a touch. That's evidence of the pressure Garvel must feel out there in this first quarter as an until then very slick yeah, that Melbourne was, Fume machine. That was a no-look <laughs> pass from Pennison for Arnott, but uh, Michelle could have looked. McInnes. Unforced errors all over the ship. Well, he's just about ready for the break, I'd say. Last minute, first quarter, 18-10, Melbourne lead it. Good turn of play there from ground to pick up Sheridan uh, Abbott. And again, Borle is unable to finish. Tavener, a useful attempt at defending from behind. Arnold out. Neatly placed pass for Southby. And Gill the rebound. Might be all we'll see as the timekeeper's up. And a desperate pass to no good measure from uh, Danny Grant. But what a good first quarter from Melbourne. Lead it over Adelaide Garvel, surprisingly by that margin, 18-11. Hesitation at the start of the quarter there, and a little bit of a, an elbow from Liz Taverner to remind uh, Natalie Avellino that uh, the lead that Melbourne have established won't be given away lightly. And look at those stats for Melbourne, just punishing Eloise Southby. Uh, ample possession with 17 attempts and a great form, 82%, 14 through the ring for her. Danny Arnott not enjoying too much uh, access to the ball, but... 100% accuracy. Adelaide Garvel, they won't like to see the possession. Only 17 attempts in that first quarter. 7 from 12 for their skipper at 58%. Uncharacteristic for Jenny Borlase. Avellino, 80%. South Beat. Norma Plummer. Susie Howie to the far right. Just come out of plaster this week, Steve. That's right. And talking to Norma about uh, Susie's chances of making the Australian under-21 side to go to Canada for the World Youth Cup. And Norma is much in praise of the new selection system that allows well-credentialed injured players the maximum time to get back into a national side. Absolutely. I think for too long we've been ruthless and, and clear-cut in saying, no, can't meet the time, you're not there. Whereas, you know, New Zealand, probably our main opposition, have really nurtured people back from maternity leave <laughs> and injuries and the like. And uh, why not? Why sacrifice a player instead of giving them every chance? And how we right in there contesting a spot in that youth team and Australia wanting to uh, avenge a loss a few years back to New Zealand they'd love to have that crown South be much amused 20 to 12 that'd be the eight goal margin that's uh, <laughs> lightening her mood Arnott, South be and a touch from Danny Grant denying Ingrid Dick It's interesting to see the emergence of new teams in the competition. For so long we've watched Garville and considered them to have the slick timing and the understanding throughout the combination that uh, many other teams lacked. It's turned now. It's all with Melbourne in this first stage of the game. Avellino, Tavener put beside. Southby. She took Benison. it well. It was placed on the inside, then closer to Gill than herself. So good strong hands then from the youngster. Nice disguise on that uh, pass then. It really did look like she was up for the shot. Didn't work out, but looked good. Get Had me points fool? for that? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm easily fooled. <laughs> no, I like that one. Southby again. Then there's a lot to like about these two teams. Garble centre pass. Avellino. Grant gives the one two to McInnes. Still the margin, uh, pretty much as it was at quarter time. 
Garvel have taken a few out of it and then given them back. Last five minutes of the quarter. Avellino. Melbourne with it again. McInnes. Oh, quick hands from Southby to Arnott. She's fairly sparing in that, but she does once or twice a game show you that she's got those skills. Absolutely, but that was just wonderful attacking play from their skipper, McInnes. And read well by Southby. How do you do? Avelino <laughs> around the back to Grant and driving the bases, ball A's. And her only problem then was trying to get a feet grounder before she took the ball. So Deb Miller with the problems. Again, wonderful take from McInnes at speed. Anderson up for Arnott. Squire right there. Gil. <laughs> it's like a baseball catcher, shaking your head. Don't want that one. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> or pitcher. Ball A's. Grant. Now Avellino. 27-22. McInnes. And over the top of Arnott. Gill looks for Pierce. Up the line to Arn uh, Abbott. Grant. What Avalina. a take. <laughs> yeah. What a take, what breaks. And Avalina coming into her own. Melbourne set a pass. Garvel just taking one or two out of the lead again. Yeah, Melbourne not looking as relaxed now. And rightly so, with a team of Garville's calibre. And a really sense Avellino stepping it up a gear now. Ingrid Dick to Danny Arnott. Holding, Hold against Grant. Just look at the body jostling back in the circle. <laughs> Southby. Little fortunate, there's just enough kick off the ring by the well, ball. It wasn't much it. of a jump, but the stretch and the timing was spot on. <laughs> Avellino, Abbott, 150 in the quarter, five the lead for Melbourne. A few of their bench players getting up, see there, to uh, go and warm up. Jocelyn Bryant, one of them. Chris Harris, the next walking off, tracksuit top on, former Australian shooter. Age, undisclosed. <laughs> yeah, because if we tell her, I'm going to have to confess to a few too, so we'll stay out of that one. We can still run, though. You'll be pleased to know. <laughs> Back to the Melbourne circle comes the ball. Southby. Mission approved. So, the four of them. Uh, Bryant, Fliner, Harrison, Patterson. We've got uh, shooters and midcourts warming up. The two shooters warming up, actually. It's Harris and Bryant doing the warming up. Keep you posted on that. Well, even if Norma Plummer hasn't decided uh, if and or what changes she'll make, uh, she wants those players ready. Squire apologising to Abbott for that ball, but she was under a lot of pressure from McInnes. In fact, McInnes right in underneath her shoulder. He contributed a hit towards her being offline on the take. Contact from Grant. Still with Melbourne. Time enough in this uh, last few moments for another Melbourne goal. Southbeat does just that. Looking for Abbott. Touch from Ingrid Dick. Squire. Ball is encouraging Garvel to be quick about it, knowing that uh, they're running out of time. And again, a brilliant move on the base from Avellino. <laughs> Lucky that dropped because the timekeeper's up and beside Jan Cross. 
Time called for a moment. The last few seconds, not allowed to wind down. We're not allowing Melbourne to stall. <laughs> well, there was about half a second left when they called time. But now the uh, second quarter is over and the lead is as it was. Uh, well, one taken off it. It's 30 to 24 at half time. <laughs> The game is a lot faster now and the players are more skilled and more, com well, to me, seem to be more committed. They do a lot of training, they put in a lot of time and as umpires I think we should put in the same amount of time to be fair to the players. Um, do the same sort of training that the players do and be involved with the players at their training sessions. Ingrid Dick. Melbourne Centre gets us going. Third quarter, and no changes to report. And uh, second quarter that was pretty even. And the accuracy still with South Vietnam at nine from 11.81%. Danny Arnott with 60%. Garville really enjoying Avellino's return to form in goals. Nine from 10 at 90%. Borlay still down in the 50s and uh, we're not used to seeing her there. Only four from seven. So if she can lift, uh, Garville might well run in this gap. So Garville offering 17 shots to 16 in that second quarter and winning the quarter 13 to 12. Well, you have to put wraps on Rosie Jenke to uh, be causing problems for Jenny Borlay as uh, she stepped in to Wilson's shoes last year and uh, in Vicky Wilson's absence, widely touted as probably the best shooter currently in Australia till Wilson gets back on court, then they can argue it out. But uh, Jenke causing a bit of grief for her. Benison for Melbourne, Southby. Bounces it in for Arnott. Not much space, but Benison finds it. Works the offside to the defender. One of the funny things, I suppose, about two quality teams playing each other is that they're going to produce a higher error rate than when they play a poorer team because uh, the pressure of the defence is greater. More turnovers than either side would have produced last week. I think so. I think we've seen more in this quarter than any, so perhaps uh, just a lapse in concentration. Again, it comes back to early days in the season. Another good ball to find Southby at the end of the move early days in the season you have to get used to playing this level of intensity so uh, that could be part of the reason Jocelyn Bryant again warming up in back play good shot there of the four Melbourne Puma bench players South B the last two, yeah the last two shots going in a little better for her it's interesting for all their panic and hesitancy they still have that seven goal buffer and yet the sense on court is that it's, you know, really close. Oh, stretch that one myself. Four lays. Tavener. Dick to Arnott. Three minutes left in this quarter. Southby for the seven goal lead again. Well, she's recovered from a really shaky start. She's put up six straight. Yes. Borlay's working the back space, trying the dodges on Jenky, but Jenky's glued. And uh, that's off Avellino. Jenky can advance. Tavener on the drive. They look pretty good, do Melbourne. That's their best passage to the post for quite a while. Can Arnott finish? My word. Take the lead and with the set of pass, Melbourne. Contact against Danny Grant. McInnes takes it. And Dick was looking for a quick play the ball. McInnes uh, jogs in to do it. I think trying to settle them more than rush it on. Now, off the post and off Gill. So it's with Southby, uh, sorry, with the Arnott for the throw in. Benison, or oh, quick hands to Southby. And she's back on side.
quick centre pass taken by Garble. They've got to pull in two or three here before three-quarter time, and that's not the way to do it. Now, a misunderstanding then as to who was to receive from Grant. Went straight between Abellino and Boys, and they look unhappy, Chappies. Chappets. Chappets. Heads it down. Oh, Abellino and McInnes, Australian nice. teammates. But now it's the toes and the knees. Best time move. And again. Southby. And a miss. Gill. Well, yes. nothing happened through the middle of the court then for Garville. Squire belatedly puts the drive through. They were all backing off the ball. Well, Garville better goal here. Yeah. Looking at a 10 goal lead if they turn it over. Ten goal deficit, I should say, but they haven't. Captain Borlais puts one through. Anna to Benison. South be out of the circle. Garble just looking to deny Melbourne one last goal before three-quarter time whistle. South be though will have time. Might even be time for Garble for one more if they're quick enough. Ball lays. Oh, Tavener did well, Jenky. <laughs> Ingrid Dick down to Benison. And they want a quick shot, not through the hands, won't happen. Abbott. Ball lays. And try as they might, they couldn't get it down there quickly enough. And Melbourne have slightly extended their lead. Melbourne in a little bit of trouble as, uh, sorry, Adelaide in trouble as they go to the break. 43 to 34. So Melbourne looking to run at home with a 43-34 lead. And a change in the Melbourne lineup with Chris Harris coming on at goal attack for Danny Arnott. And the stats just a nightmare for Garvel. Only 13 attempts at goal. Six from eight for Borlais at 75%. Four from five for Avellino at 80%. All Melbourne, and that's deceptive. Uh, didn't notice that as we watched the quarter. The accuracy falling down for Melbourne, so it would have been even more punishing had they bound to keep the stats up. But as you look at it, both below 60s and a combined effort of just in the 40s. So not a good uh, story in accuracy for Melbourne, but uh, ample possession. Well, 25 attempts to 13. As you say, if Melbourne had converted even in the mid-50s or 60%, they could have wrapped this game up, but Garvel do have a chance. And the job for Garvel is to score every time they have the ball and eke out a few turnovers. Yeah. I don't know where the turnovers are going to come. I mean, the mid-court for Melbourne has looked so solid. McInnes, Dick and Benison aren't going to give you much. Oh, no. I thought in the opening round across McInnes and Taverner was just uh, stunning. And they've uh, lost nothing in this game. They're so strong and quick to get on the drive through the midcourt through McInnes. Very athletic side. Melbourne can kick the lead out to 10 here. Grant's on the floor. Well, I'm sure she's thinking uh, that it was not dissimilar to what happened up the other end. Southby. Thank you. And then nudging up towards 50. Well, Garvel was set for a quick centre pass then. Couldn't take it. Much of this match hasn't really gone the way they would like. Ball A's. Under nine minutes to go in this match. And it's Garvel in a bit of bother. Well, more than a bit. Nine goals worth of bother. Chris Harris rolling around the back, using the baseline. Very much, she does very much play in circles if you watch her pattern of play. Does it make her easy or difficult to play with, Em? Well, I think sometimes, in all honesty, you have to read her moves and clear for her moves. But she does often play in circles, and I was about to say uh, sometimes the trick is knowing when to get out of the way and when to come. <laughs> but if you play behind her, you really do have to read off her moves rather than uh, assume something will happen. 
Nice build up from Garble. Let it go! Uh, Sharon Birch just clarifying what uh, the call was there. Possession has stayed with Garble. I think Borlase was hoping for obstruction. Yeah, she was talking about uh, some sort of action off the court. It was just difficult to hear. And that's the difference. Garble taking quite some time to get to possession in the circle. Useful when they get it, but uh, they have no time. Six straight from Borle, so... Borle is well on track for Garville, shooting them home, just wanting more possession and quicker access to the circle. Seven minutes to go as Grant eventually works it to Avelino. It's an obstruction call, so it'll be a penalty shot or pass. Borle is in back play, screaming, yes, yes, yes. She wanted the ball close to the post. I think she's aware that if they take too long, they're just going to run out of time, whether they can uh, score or not. Seven the difference. Harris, <laughs> Squire came out, but Harris knew, could hear the advancing footsteps. South. They do not look like faltering now, Melbourne. They look comfortable protecting a lead and kicking it home against quality opposition. So they're looking ominous. There are not too many faults in this Melbourne lineup, and there's strength to uh, come back when you consider Janine Lynch is around. She might even have trouble getting a position back from Rosie <laughs> Jenke, the way Rosie's played today. Nothing worse than sitting on the bench watching the person that replaced you go really well. Yeah. <laughs> Still, I, I had heard some criticism before the comp of Melbourne's lack of depth in defence, or supposed lack of depth, and you'd certainly have to query that. As Avelino calls time, she tumbled on an ankle. And uh, the eight-goal deficit will be hurting more than all those body parts put together. Strong rebound from Borlase. Needs to be. They've got to convert everything. This for her eighth straight. She's doing everything, everything she can to put them through. Garvel trying to talk it up, looking for a turnover. They need about three of them. Benison. Well, seven in just under six minutes is not beyond possibility. That might be one. So they need a couple of turnovers. They've got the numbers in attack. Oh, and that's, oh, but a good stretch on this, on the planning of the foot from Borlase. Well done. She does that as well as any shooter in the world, I think. Planting that foot. It was so important to, to be able to plant for closer distance, but also to keep your balance and your strength under the shot. That's an elbow against her for pushing off, and she'll rue that call. That's just what they needed to make the break. Well, certainly no question from uh, Jenny, but realising that she'd done it in her desperation to convert quickly. Grant. <laughs> oh, Pierce. Pierce shaking off Benison. 4.40. Abbott, six the difference and 4.40 to go. Borlase. Oh, oh yeah. she's running them home. Borlase, 10 straight, no misses. Melbourne might start to get a little bit edgy now as uh, Garble start to uh, put the foot down. Ingrid Dick. And another turnover, this time against Chris Harris for running through Gill. He knocked it to the ground, just on the move to the circle. Good break from Squire, makes it a fast passage down court. And Borlase again anchors the right foot at the baseline, over Tavener and, oh, how cruel was that? Tavener, oh, and that's against Abbott. Came off second best and had the penalty. McInnes. Wing Pushing off, oh. use of elbow against Benison, so it's all going Garvel's way to run at home. <laughs> so oh, no. A few things breaking their heart at the end of the passage. Well, Abbott really was put under enormous pressure by that pass. So it's with Ingrid Dick. McKinnis. Look at the last two turnovers. They've had opportunities to drag two back and take their centre passes, so they could well be one off even. Barney drops side. If they're not, they're still five down. Three minutes, 20 remaining. Clincher, maybe, from Harris. Yeah, steadying shot from Chris Harris. She's experienced. 
reminder of those scores from last year when Melbourne won both their encounters, 55-54 and 55-53. This one not quite as close, but they've played it with that kind of intensity. Four lays. Touch under three minutes left. You've got to keep in mind too, Garville could well have just been run over by Melbourne. They had the chance, what, 10 goal leads to really go on with it and Garvel just have not given in. They've stayed in there and we've got quite a few weeks of netball ahead. Well, if you take out that sleepy first quarter from Garvel when they trailed 18-11, this really could have been a different story. Two fifteen to go. 52-47 Melbourne, Southby. To and uh, Squire and Gill have reversed roles in that Gill is picking up Harris's entry to the circle and Squire is back marking Southby. So they've done positional switches. Oh, and that was nearly suicidal. And painful. Oh, it is painful for Garble. It's a turnover. Jenky. And this Melbourne side running all over the court, making themselves available. Southby, Benison, Harris. Squire just lost away on the retreat. And that freed up Harris. Melbourne. And I think the match might well be safe with Melbourne. Looks like two wins from two starts for the team which finished runner-up last year. And they look set to make the semis again in 1996. Remember, they only play seven round robin games before hitting the semi-finals. Quite an advantage to finish top. One plays four, two plays three when they get to semi-final time. First position is much prized. Go through undefeated, of course, and you're guaranteed that position. Benison. Last minute of the game. It's going to be Melbourne's match. Southby. <laughs> and a misread between Benison and Harris. Fortunately, it doesn't matter. It would have three or four minutes ago. Squire. Benison tried to make amends. Jenke does. And Jenke's charge out is rewarded. She's had a screamer. Benison. Southby. And Melbourne just starting to ease out again. Garvel realising the cause is lost. And uh, just letting... Uh, Go their intensity a little in the last 60 seconds. And Avellino, goalkeeper's up. Sorry, the timekeeper, not the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper's been up all game. 56 to 49 is the final score, and that is a very solid win for Melbourne. Garvel came at them time and again. Perhaps the platform was was built in the first quarter when Melbourne despite a slightly hesitant uh, opening two or three minutes, built an 18-11 lead. Garvel reduced it by one at halftime to trail 30 to 24. 43-34 at three-quarter time. And uh, at, the, at the finish, 56-49. Well, an, an effort of solid defense right across the Melbourne back line. And uh, the ability of Rosie Jenke to a haul in the rebounds and the intercepts, certainly important to the Melbourne win, and as was the, uh, the shooting of Southby and both Arnott and Harris. A good win for Melbourne, and Anne Sargent is with Rosalie Jenke. Thanks, Steve.